Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Blue Show Podcast. I'm your host, Marco Brella. And before we get started with this episode, I just want to say thank you guys so very much for the positive feedback on the first episode. I know it was short and boring, I know, but that, like I said, that was just an introduction to what's to come. And I'm really happy the way it turned out. As of right now, it has 23 views, which is actually really good for a very first episode. And also, before I start, um, I want you guys to know, make sure make sure you follow the YouTube. That's the Brilla Show podcast on Spaces. And on SoundCloud, it's the Brilla Show podcast. So yeah, just give it a look. Wherever you listen to this podcast, go tell your friends, go tell your family, and so on and so on. Now, today's guest. Now, when I, when I wanted to pick today's guest, I wanted to be someone who I know, personally. You know, I could pick any. I could pick anybody random, right? But I say no. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pick somebody I know personally. Now I thought it'd be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is a really close friend of mine. I know him since second grade. We met all the way back in second grade, and um, now I, I've had the great pleasure of growing up with him. We know a lot about each other. My guest today is my close friend Nico Giglade. Say hi, Nico. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I swear to God, dude. What what took you so long, man? Um, I'm not gonna lie, bro. My internet. <laughs> Don't be shy. You're please like please lagging dumb mad people. hard right now. No, ever since this man joined <laughs> my internet right now. I'm gonna have to read For those this. For you know, we we record our podcast on Discord and we have this AI that records <laughs> our, our our chats. So, um, but yeah, um, so yeah, I, I decided to pick Nico because, like I said, I know him since second grade. I mean, I've had the great pleasure of going off with him, and I figured, you know, it's a great first guest, you know? Me and him have a lot in common. We're both Italian. I'm more Italian than him, as I would say. <coughs> my, name, my name is more Italian than you. Another way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, what, what do you guys think? Marco Perillo or Nico Gigliotti? I mean, Gigliotti is more Italian, but I feel like Marco is more Italian. How does Marco Gigliotti sound? That sounds good. That sounds better. Nah. <laughs> All right, well... What do you mean, nah, bro? I mean, Gigliotti was, was a weird name. When I was little, I never knew how to pronounce Gigliotti. I never knew I always that. thought you were a pasta. My young bull. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times people, when, I, when I'm at school, and I go to my attendance, and everyone said, Marco Borilia, they always put two, two, two L's. I mean, no, two, two I's, stuff like that. And they'll mess up my name. I was like, oh. Like, you really listen to the posture people, and they have this corny-ass teacher laugh, like every single teacher does, and it's so ridiculous and corny. I, I can't tell you how many times. Speaking of school, and um, I know Nico does online. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say what school, because I feel like that's too much, but me and Nico go to the same virtual school. Because of him, he brought me into this school. And um, when COVID first hit, obviously no, nobody knew what to do. Because the first thing everyone thought is, what about my job? What about school? Especially for kids our age. And so when having Tina announced that it was going virtual, I don't know about you, Nico, but I, I was dumb paranoid. Yeah. What, what, were you, what were your thoughts? What, were, what was going through your head when having uh, said they were going virtual back in March of 2020? And I about drop out. I'm not going to lie. I did not out. want to not, I did honestly, not Abington, school. <laughs> that, that is so true because... Um, I go to I used to go to a school called Abington. So, um um Abington has been an in person school for what decade? I don't know how long it's been open since my, my aunt went there. And um I don't expect them to know how to run an online class because I like they've been like I said, they've been in person for decades. And when when I heard the period I, I don't know 'cause I don't I don't remember the schedule. But wasn't it like ninety minute class periods, nigga? Was it yeah, it was, I, th- I think it was 80 or 90 minute classes for each thing. Yeah, and then and we have minute five break. minutes in. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. We had we would, we would have nine minute breaks in between. And I would, no, not, not nine, five minutes. And it would just drive me insane. I absolutely hated it. Because if we're for, like, no, no, no I'm a gamer. <laughs> and that's come to a surprise. You, know? and if, you can ask Nico. My fat ass just games all day. Yes. So, for the, so like, I don't mind standing, sitting in my chair and gaming, right? And so many are wondering, well, if you can sit an hour and game, why can't you just sit down in your computer and work and do school? That's a good question because I, I don't like it. It's plain, plain and simple, right to the point. I don't like it because not only is the material you boring, but the teachers don't care. The teachers just 
when I get the lesson done, here's a class, just shove it down your throat. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And I hate that style of learning. I hate it so much. So when when you cram all that shit in, into like 90 to 80 minute class periods, and then have a little mini break, it drove me insane. Was it a, was it a one hour? I don't think it was one hour. Was it 20 minute lunch? Between there was 20 minute lunch and then it was lunch. yeah you get 20 minutes lunch and then you get the rest is like a break from everything because it's that a study hall absolutely ridiculous exactly and so after a while um nico said i had enough and we went to this other school the saw line school actually do you do, do you want to say what school it is or yeah it's a world i it? think it's a uh, all around I think it's on the country. Though. I don't, is it everywhere? Nah, because one of my teachers are in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, so online school we're talking about hashtag. This is not sponsored, by the way. This is definitely not sponsored podcast. But <laughs> the school we go to is called Commonwealth Charter Academy, or in short abbreviation, CCA. And so Nico went to the school because, obviously, like me, I was fed up. Why? Why did you leave Abington to go to CCA, Nico? Um, my sister first started it because she couldn't go to classes on online. Because she couldn't sit in it. They were doing eight hour straight classes. So then my brother switched, and then I had issues with the teachers. So then I switched. And then so wait, I got you to switch. What grade, what grade is. So, yeah, so this was last year. What grade was Genevieve? What, what, what grade was your sister in last year? I think, she, no, I think she was in first grade last year. First grade. And they expect her to sit. Was it eight hours straight or was it like? It was eight hours. hours break it was eight break. hours. No, it was seven hours straight with like a forty-minute break. You're shitting me. Yeah. They expect someone at her age to sit there for that long and learn. Yeah. Yeah, that she used to cry. That was bad. Uh, that that's ridiculous. That's kind of like what I was going through. I want to say cry, but I would get so furious at the end of the day because I just I hated it. And I actually I, I sometimes snapped at my parents because. How much I hated it, and I just wanted to like, I want to punch something in the damn wall, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that is bad. Just good for a first grader doing class for seven hours straight. That is bad. So like like Nico said, um, her si his sister went to CCA, and then his brother, and then eventually he did. And at the time, I didn't know how good it was. So then um, I think we were in the Discord, and me and him were playing Fortnite. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, we were playing Fortnite, and he was telling me all the good things about CCA. Because one, Abington ended school way later in the summer. I want to say like June 25th, 26th, like halfway through the summer. So like, that's like half of your summer gone, damn, because you had to finish school. Um, they have way more holidays off. We have longer uh, winter breaks and spring breaks. And then we have we do the, the one of the most unique things I love about CCA. Is that you get all your classwork and homework done during class, and you would rarely have homework. And occasionally, you have like you do a couple things in class, so you do it after school, and you just turn it in for the day. It's that simple and easy. Um, and plus, you know, the teachers are really accessible to get to. Like you, you can literally give them their phone, your own personal phone number. You can text them, and say, "Hey, Mrs. Blah blah blah, I did bad on this quiz. Can I be taken?" And we'll respond to you. Um, but it, it was so much better, and I I took this upon myself, and I asked my parents, hey, can I transfer to CCA? So, like, don't get me wrong. Anybody in Abington, I don't hate Abington. <coughs> it's just that um, I didn't think it was perfect online. I liked it as an in-person school. The only problem was that my grades in Abington, and I think Nico can agree with me because I know he, we talked about him, talked about it before, that, like, well, your grades were not good in Abington, right? No offense. Yeah, no, they were not as good as they are now. Are your grades good in Abington, Nico? No, they were not. Yeah, and it's it's now now that we both go to CCA, our grades are better. Like I have all A's and B's right now. Like if I were to go to compare myself to uh, March of like twenty twenty Abington, I had maybe one A, a couple B's, C's, and it was really bad. It was really bad. So. I took this from my parents because my parents knew how stressful it was for me, especially because I can't stay in still in, a, in one environment because obviously I, I have ADHD, so I can't focus and I can't stand in the same place for a while. Otherwise, I'll start fucking you know, going insane and shit. So it's really simple. They processed all my grades over to CCA. So I, my grades were the same when I went to CCA. 
and I want to say about like a week or two, all my grades changed, and like, and I I finished the year off with A's and B's, and probably one C, not even and C. So, but yeah, and that 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 will lead me to my next question, Nico. And I also, because obviously, at the time of recording this, obviously it's the sixteenth of twenty twenty one, and obviously COVID is still at large, especially now that school just started for many kids and teenagers our age. Um, and I'm, that's that's my next question. Um, how 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 did COVID affect you as mentally and physically? It affected my high school years a lot. It's done Obviously, a lot to me. Everyone's the whole high school experience. It's supposed to yeah, be because... a dream. Exactly. Everyone, if you regard your parents, they probably say, oh, my high school years were the best. Me and, you know, Billy, we uh, were close friends. We would drive the car. And, like, everyone, everyone was, like, so happy back then. And then COVID affected me mentally a lot. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not the only one. Obviously, um... Unfortunately, millions of people around the world lost close ones and loved ones to COVID, and it was not the best time, especially now. Um, if you were to ask, if you were to think about us a year ago, and we would say, yeah, COVID would be definitely gone. COVID is just going to die down just like the common flu. And now, and then there's current me who say, yeah, you're fucking insane. Because it, it, it's not gone, obviously. Nope. And it, the thought about it, it, it kind of reminds me of like, a prison sentence, you know what I mean? Like, you're you're waiting to see, okay, please be, be short, please be short. And then it's like, okay, yeah, I you know, you're not gonna, we're not gonna know until like another year. And you have to wait a whole ass year just so that COVID cases are gonna go higher. And it's the worst thought. It's like a never ending loop. You wake up and the whole world's in panic. And then you go to bed and you wake up, the whole world, it's like the same damn loop over and over again. And it, when I, when COVID first started, I was paranoid because I didn't know what it was because it was in China at the time. I remember, and I told this to Nico. I clearly remember mar- around <coughs> around March. Um, I was in history class and we, we had a we had a Chrome lo- um uh, Chromebooks and we were doing like a project. And I remember I would visit this COVID nineteen website and it'll tell you. Um, where it currently is at large, and how many cases, how many deaths. And at the time, it was in China and Europe. It was really affecting Europe. And the thought how month by month, eventually, it started in China, and then it spread to Europe, and then it started coming to America, and then it started coming to my state, and then it's coming to my town, and then my neighbor has it across the street. And now at the time of recording this, my brother had it, or I'm not sure still has it, and my mom had symptoms, so it it's so creepy to see how this COVID this COVID nineteen vi- uh, virus is coming closer and closer to me. No, it, it's definitely it definitely damages you mentally because it's it's definitely a terrifying thought, and that's something that I never wish to happen to anybody. So anybody uh, viewers out there, um, I'm very very sorry for anybody who lost loved ones um, to the COVID nineteen virus. Just know that you know you're not going through it alone. You have me to um, comfort you in this time. And although COVID's been here from about to be here for two years now, um, like I said, you know, you're not going through it alone. So it definitely it, it, it affected me mentally too and physically because I was trying to lose a little weight, and then when I, when COVID first started, I was paranoid to go outside because if I see one person call for sneeze, like oh hell no, I'm out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's it, it's definitely it's definitely scary. Because so, like, it's I hate it. I just want to be done. It's as, in, in a way, it's like an over an overstayed its day. You know what I mean? It's bad. And like, has COVID affected your family, Nico? Mm, yeah, it affected my grandparents a lot to the point where they didn't leave their house for like months, and yeah, it caused them a lot my, of um, mental issues. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Did your parents? Did your parents go visit them when they were like no, that, or they weren't my parents? They oh, were yeah, not allowed. They mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. It happened. It happened to my dad's parents too. Up in, cause they live in um, they live in they live in New Jersey, and um, like my especially my grandfather, who I believe is eighty. Don't wanna, I don't wanna say too old because that's gonna offend. But, but um, yeah, he was. Because he had kidney transplant, he had a, a um, knee replacement, and like he was, 
no offense to the man, but he had a lot of surgery back in the day. So he was definitely paranoid of getting COVID. And at the time of recording this, he's still battling, um, I want to say, not, I think it was not leukemia. I'm definitely not leukemia. Basically, he has water in his lungs and his body. And every couple of weeks, he has to go to the hospital to drain it out. And my thoughts and prayers go to my no-no back in New Jersey. So, thoughts and prayers. But, yeah. Especially, it, it's it terrifying with el elderly people. Because, obviously, kids can battle it. Um, adults can somewhat battle it. But it's it's highly unlikely that... Unfortunately, elderly, especially my our grandparents, can barely beat it, and it's terrifying because like it's it's a low chance that kids can get COVID and especially die from COVID, which is I want to it's kind of I'm gonna say it's unfair. It's obviously it's good because you know you know die, but it were unfortunate to see that people like our own parents can pass away from it anytime, especially our elderly, and it's really terrifying. Like I, I came in. I can't even thought. I can't even thought about that. But yeah, and one one thing I realized that during the COVID nineteen pandemic, what's the one thing that kept me distracted? And what's the one thing that kept me at bay? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> the one thing that I figured out that kept me relaxed during the pandemic, especially when it first started back in March, is what what can I distract myself with? What can I Ignore the crazy world we're right now, and and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what that is, video games. Uh, shocker, shocker, right? Nico, shocker, right? Every yep. fucking teenager, a <laughs> teenager, a teenager, um, so likes video games. Oh, God forbid, you know, today's society that a kid likes video games. I mean, obviously, like I said, I'm a gamer. I've been gaming since I was a little kid. Started with the Nintendo 3DS, then the Wii, then the original Xbox, and then the Xbox 360, and the Xbox One, and especially my PC. So, a video game has has evolved since I was almost a little kid. And and when I first when Carter first started, you I want to see if you remember Nico. Remember when co school said, "Yeah, we're gonna take a two week break and see what happens after that." You remember that? Yep. And then a, a half a year later, we're still, we're still in, doing online and shit. I mean, obviously, there's some schools do hybrid, which personally, if you ask me, is absolutely stupid. Because as you can see, COVID cases ironically went up as soon as they went back to high school and college and all that. And yeah, so they, they said, oh, yeah, two weeks. We'll see what happens. We'll probably be back, uh, you know, a fucking year later. <laughs> uh, we're still doing virtual. And... When I first heard that we were doing it, I thought it was like, oh, hell yeah. I literally remember yelling as soon as the last bell rang to go to your buses. I remember that I yelled at, hell yeah, it's spring break. And then, you know, it definitely was not spring break. Because <laughs> now we live in a personal hell when we were trapped in your house. <laughs> you know? And, um, mm -hmm. and, cause like, you know, no, no, I, I had to distract myself. Cause like I said, when I first came to, the Amer America, I was dumb paranoid. I was like, I was scared, and I needed to distract myself. And I found video games as a comfort. I've always found that as a comfort. I, when I'm angry, when I'm stressed, when I'm, I gotta get my mind off something. I'll do gaming, game, I'll game. Rather to be Fortnite, Call of Duty, MLB The Show, Minecraft, anything, any game, and um, I'll just do it, cause it's my comfort thing, and I, that's why. I, that's why one of the reasons why I started streaming, um, because I I liked gaming, and that leads me to my next question. So obviously, video games are really good. Well, the, for me personally, video games have been somewhat boring. How about how what, what are your thoughts on video games right now, Nico? I'm in love hey, with them. If I'm not working, I'm playing. <laughs> do you, do you, do you find some video games to be repetitive after a while though? Hmm. If you play them non-stop, 100%, they do get repetitive. Yeah, but like, yeah, but like, what if it's a game you really like and you want to grind that one person? Like, you do all these challenges to get that one person. Do you feel like, do you think it's worth it that you grinded, like, eight hours a day just to get this one character? Do you think it's really worth it, though? Um, like I said, I think it depends on how often you play that game. If you play it and continue playing after yeah. it, then yes. If you, if you do it like, and then you're like... For some reason, for... Um, yeah, you're right. 
it has to be the pen because like there's some games when I first start playing when you first start playing a game. Sorry for anybody who is like not a teenager because you you're completely not gonna get this. But for any of my young teenage viewers like me, obviously, um, if you really want to play this game, the game is brand new. It just came out at GameStop. It just came out online. You want to play it? You get it. For like maybe two to three weeks straight, you grind this game. You have the best characters, your best things in the game, and then all of a sudden you just lose interest in it. And you wasted like say the game was like sixty dollars when it first came out. You just, that's a waste of sixty dollars, and that that's been happening to me lately because. When Kurt first started, gaming was good, and um, someone who talked about this was um, a fellow streamer named Cypher PK. Shout out to Cypher PK. And I don't know, I forgot when he said this, but he said that when Kurt first started, video game was a hobby. Before, actually, not even when Kurt, before Kurt started, we thought gaming was a hobby. You come home from school, you do your work, and your chores, and you hop on with the boys, and you game. It's a, it's a fun side thing to do. When you're not, when you're bored, you just hop on and play with your friends, right? But mm-hmm. COVID first started, and we're in full on lockdown. Barely nobody went outside, and we're, and you're just stuck inside. And your first instinct is like, "Hey, I'm gonna game." Like we don't have any school, we don't have any. Well, when we when we didn't have school, we didn't have anything to do, so we just stayed home and game. And for the couple of weeks, it was fun because obviously you had nothing to do because you're not really supposed to go outside, and you just game. So, but eventually, as time goes on and COVID evolves and gets even bigger, is that a hobby slowly turn into a day to day thing, and eventually it didn't turn into a hobby. Now it's just a task to do every day. Lifestyle. And I don't know about you, Nico, but like exactly, it went from a life a hobby to a lifestyle. And when you expect when you have nothing to do besides game all day since COVID started. It, it gets boring, I will admit. Shockingly enough. Like, I have... Sometimes I'll get on Discord, right? And I'll, I, I'll say to my friends, yo, you can hop on. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And then they join. And then they ask me, what do I want to play? And I'm like, shit, why did I want you guys to come? I don't know what to play. <laughs> I completely Just forget. Like that, exactly. And, you know, obviously, that's one of the reasons why I want to start a podcast. But anyways, yeah, and sometimes we'll just sit there and talk. Because I don't want to play any video games. Because... Like I'll I'll give an example of some of the games I have. I have Minecraft. Minecraft is an occasional mood thing, unless someone's on with me. I have uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which doesn't work for me sometimes. I have Fortnite, which is on and on off again. If no one's on, I'll play solo, but it's boring a little bit. And Overwatch, I got that. I literally got Overwatch because one, I played it when I was um a little younger, and two, I needed a new fresh game that I think. Oh, I think. I would grind the skins with all the cool gun wraps and all the cool gun skins and all that stuff. And now I literally don't want to play it as much anymore as I when I first got it. And and I don't know why. It's just eventually I get old of the same video game. And I think what Nico said is that if you play it on a day-to-day basis, it gets annoying. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, and then, uh, so, and then uh, my brother, uh, I forgot when we got it, he brought home MLB The Show 20. But they didn't know me personally. I'm a big baseball fan. I, uh, let's go Mets. You know, screw you, Nico. Nico's a Phillies fan. Can imagine. That's how okay. I feel about them. Okay. Uh, so I'm a Mets fan, and I love baseball. I played t-ball when I was little. I played baseball and all that stuff. So, um, a while back, I don't know, remember what MLB game it was. I think it was roughly around 2011, 2012, when the MLB games were out back then. I used to play all the time on the, my Xbox 360. I used to grind that stuff. So, when my brother got this, I was like, oh my god. I remember, I remember when I played that back in 2012. It was a refresher. It was a brand new game that I haven't played. I haven't played any MLB game since like 2011 or 2012. Instead of playing the game, same game over and over and over again. And, and, and another thing, this is not a sponsor. I'm not sponsored by MLB The Show. But if you want to sponsor me, MLB The Show... Hit me in the DMs. <laughs> Anyways, then like I was saying. Um, so yeah, I was like, brand new game, hell yeah. And I'm playing the minute I first started playing it, all the nostalgia came back to me. Of the same team. Hell some players who played back in twenty twelve still play this day, you know, God bless them. They don't no offense, they're old. But um yeah, and I, I loved it. The game modes, Road to the Show, Diamond Dynasty, March Tractober, 
just a hell of a home run derby. That shit's just so much fun. Um, and I got sucked in. And that was, I think my brother got it like five, six months ago. And ever since then, I've been grinding it. I, I'm, a through, I'm not tired of it. This is the first game in a while that I'm not tired of it. Usually, I have, like, you can have, Nico, Nico's the same way. Like, you can have, like, a two to three week addiction with the game. And then after that, you're, like, you're done. Right. And that's you with Minecraft, you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, we will start a world, we grind it, we have diamond and all that stuff. And then one day, I'll, yeah, Nico, tap on the world. Eh, I don't know. I'm not really used to playing Minecraft. I'm, I'm not the mood. And then we won't play Minecraft for like a month or two. <laughs> and it's the it's, it's same repeat. But I, you know, at the time of recording this, Nico just got MLB The Show. And my fr other friend, John, got it yesterday. And uh, what, 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 are you, what are your thoughts on it? Nico? What do you, how do you like MLB The Show? It's fun. I just can't play it by myself. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, honestly, that's why there's, I mean, that's why there's Diamond Dynasty. There's so many other game modes you can grind solo. And then there's like playing on online. You can play Diamond Dynasty with your friends, a regular exhibition, a home run derby online, and it was just so fun. I I love it, and it's it's such a good game. But yeah, um, and that that also kind of connects to my next question: is that are you looking forward to any new games that just are that are coming out in the nearby future? The new God of War. I am so excited for that. Yes. The God of War game why. mode. I never got. So good. I never got into that. What's so good about it though? I don't know what's. It's. It's just an angry bald man with an axe just going around. Oh, it's got an extremely good story mode and a very long one too. So it's not like just a day thing. It takes you a couple of days. I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that that's what a good story should be. A normal story mode should be. Like, a couple of days long, honestly. Like I said, I never got really into God of War. It seems like a really good game. The, um, Obviously, the new Spider-Man game that, that just, just got released from the PS4 um, and 5 demo. Are you excited about that? The huge Spider-Man game? I know you yes. love Spider-Man yes. 4 games. I play. I beat that story mode two days in a row, back to back. You Wait, you beat the story mode two? You beat, you beat it twice? Yeah, two times. Yep, I beat it two times back to back in two days. Jesus, I mean, I I like that. I'm I have an Xbox and a PC. I don't have a PS5 or PS4. I've seen that. I've seen people playing gameplay of it, and it looks really good. I love the story mode. Is this is this swinging hard in it though? No, it's 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 a game that looks complicated, but you can have so much fun. Like, I'll just, I, after I finish the story mode, I literally just got on for, like, a good hour just to swing around and have fun. Yeah, and that, those are, it, that's the one, uh, the other game that, like, you can, even if the story mode is gone, there's so much to do. There's, there's side missions. There's, um, skins to grind. Like, there's really cool skins. There's the, the base tokens to get cool upgrades for a guy. And it's, uh, that, it, it's a really fantastic game. Honestly, I don't like I said I don't know how PS Five, so I never played it, but I've seen gameplay and YouTube about it, and it's such a good game. I love it because it's one of those games where it makes you want to go back into it. Plus, Spider Man's badass. Marvel is just amazing. Mm -hmm. It is just amazing. I love Marvel. And speaking of Marvel, Nico, and this is a highly debated question to this day. I don't think anybody can. I don't think anybody can answer this. Are you Team Marvel, or Team DC? One hundred percent. DC's corny. Hundred percent what? Marvel. Really? Yeah. DC's got cool things it's and all, so... but Marvel it's just See, generally better for Marvel. I don't know. I mean it's close call. I think I'm wrong. I love love both. I love superheroes. Uh, it, it was another thing to me. I love learning the character arc. I love learning about their powers, their backstories. Um but at the end of the day, Obviously, Marvel makes better movies. Obviously, that's unarguable. They make better games. I mean, movies, right? Mm -hmm. that's just I mean, from what I heard, because I don't know DC's been pulling out a, new, a lot of new sh movies. The new Batman movie is going to come out next year, and I've heard a lot of good things about it. You know that the new Batman movie coming out? It's a horror movie. Is it? Yeah, it's rated R in a horror movie. I never heard 
of a rated uh, horror superhero movie, and it's Batman. So yeah. it, it, I'm assuming brutal. Robert Peter Shaw, I think that's his name. His Batman version importation is gonna be really bloody and gory. Yeah. It's honestly I'm all for, and I'm really actually excited to see it. But then again, hashtag I'm not sponsored. You know, how much can I say I'm not sponsored by a company? <laughs> DC, if you want me to be sponsored, please sponsor me. I love your work. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, um, yeah, um, Green Arrow was a good show, but I also I, the last season I struggled so hard to finish. It was so boring. So boring. So, so, so. Um, video games, I, I, although Marvel only has, um, Spider-Man. And don't get me wrong, like I said, Spider-Man is a phenomenal game. The graphics, the music, the gameplay, it all looks so phenomenal. But, I don't think it's enough to carry the whole Marvel genre in gaming. I feel like DC has, like, what, all the Batman Arkham game series, the Injustice, the DC Lego games. Marvel has some Lego games, but I feel like DC is better. So I feel like video games go to DC. No. Comic book wise, what do you mean no? I think the only good DC game that's generally about DC is Batman. I wouldn't consider Ju- Injustice a DC game because that's just com. It's pretty much Mortal Kombat. I mean, but how? I mean, obviously the same people who made Mortal Kombat made that. Yeah, so I wouldn't consider that a DC game like Spider Man's a Marvel game. I don't know. I mean, to be fair, that you did grind Mortal Kombat when it first came out. Yeah, I grinded Mortal Kombat, grinded Injustice, I've grinded Spider Man, Batman. I played all of them. Marvel's yeah, generally got better I games mean, because now they have Avengers, Black Panther, Iron Man. Yeah, but but the Avengers game mode was such a big letdown. I've never heard that many good things about the new Avengers game. Yeah. But it was still good. It was good for an Avengers first game. The future yeah, will be I better. Know. I mean, I would, I would figure you'd see big time YouTubers and streamers play, but I have, I've seen, I've seen the story mode. It's not really, it was, was alright. It wasn't too promising, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, comic books, I think DC is better. I don't know why. Mm. There's so much darker DC comic books that really intrigue me. Like, um, uh, was, I forgot the comic book series when, um, Darkseid found the anti-life equation, and turned, it's basically turned everyone to zombies, anyone, anyone who, who has seen, um, or can hear the virus, they turn to zombies, that was a really good, I think it was called DC Infected, that was an amazing comic book storyline, um, obviously Injustice is such a unique concept, especially... When you basically had to pick Team Superman or Team Captain, uh, like, uh, Team Superman or Team Batman. Obviously, I picked Team Batman. Um, but yeah, I think DC wins, wins, um, comic books. And but anybody who, what, what do you guys think? What comics are better, DC or Marvel? Write down in the comments down below. But yeah, um, I don't know. I just love superheroes. It's so fascinating. I don't know why, you know? I think, I think if you're oh, yeah, going off funny. of movies, if you're going off of movies, Marvel definitely did not rush. They built up every single character. Oh, and yeah. DC kind of rushed hated, it. Even, I hate, even if I hated the suspensions, right? I hate waiting. I'm the most unpatient person ever. But honestly, and I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm going to cap when I say this, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. Because mm-hmm. I remember I freaked out when the Infinity War and off when it first came out. And well, I remember I and I and I say this to this day and hands down I feel like a lot of people can agree with me. Avengers Endgame was probably the best in movie theater experience ever. The best. Yes. I've never I, I just thinking about it right now, I I actually legit have chills because everyone was laughing. Everyone was like, Yeah, let's go everyone was silent, dead silent, especially when Spoiler alert, which, if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> uh, but, spoiler alert, when Iron Man obviously sacrificed himself, I I never heard movies that are so quiet. Like, you, you, sometimes when you're watching a movie, you hear, like, like um, the crackle of a popcorn or, or someone drinking. But I, when I say it was dead silent, like, no one is in the, the, the movie theater. Like, that's how quiet it was. And, dude, that moment... And it's another moment that gave me chills when Cap lifted Mjolnir. 
Oh my god. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I, I, I've, I'm sure I'm not the only person, but I am a Marvel geek. I love the comics. I love Marvel theories, especially. You know, have you heard of the theory that um, Captain America could could have lifted Mjolnir back in the Age of Ultron? I think he definitely could have. Probably 100%. That's why out of all mm. the... Yeah. I think there's oh, a chance gosh. that... I think he probably halfway had his power. But he needs his, uh, needed to, like, fulfill it. And that's what Endgame brought out in him. Because yeah. he only moved I mean, it a tad. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, that the theory is... The theory is, is that... Um, for anybody who hasn't watched Avengers Infinity War... I mean, um... A a Avengers, um, Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. We, ha we should watch. In one of the scenes, um, all the Avengers are having a party, and at the end, everyone was just messing around, and, and they, a Thor tested all of them to see if they can lift real there. And, you know, Iron Man didn't, couldn't do it, the Hulk couldn't do it, Black Widow couldn't, Hawkeye couldn't, and when Captain America joined up, um, he lifted and moved it a little bit. And ho obviously Thor was like, wait, what the fuck? And the theory is that at the time Captain America could have lifted it, but he didn't want to embarrass Thor in front of all the people. And I honestly, it makes sense because I feel like I think out of all the Avengers, I see the thing is who who is in your opinion who is more worthy, Captain America or Iron Man? Um, that's difficult. I think Iron Man. I'm not gonna it lie. Is. I think Iron Man, if if I you mean, were I judging think... off the past Infinity War, Iron Man yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, that's that's what I was gonna say because I Iron Man in the past, obviously he was a self, he was a douchebag. But if you were to, if you were to, if you were to ask me if Avengers Endgame and Infinity War Iron Man were worthy, I would say hell yes. He would obviously he would be worthy. I think I, I think that'll be such a cool last scene before he died. He lifted the on air because if you ask me, I think both are obviously worthy. But I want to say Cap is more worthy because Cap was all 120, like 100 percent always worthy since, since the beginning. He sacrificed himself to freeze himself in ice cold so that New York doesn't get bombed. And the thing with Iron Man is that Iron Man was only 50 percent worthy. <laughs> in a nutshell, like Iron Man was 50 percent worthy, Captain America was 100. I would have definitely loved because I think towards the end Iron Man was definitely worthy of Mjolnir. Yeah, and I love I love the progression arc, arc, um, of Iron Man's character. He definitely, he definitely grew up because like he's one of my top three favorite Avengers, along with Doctor Strange, um, uh, Doctor Strange, Spider Man, and Iron Man. Um, because he's definitely up there because I I love his pro his progression. He became douchebag business owner of a big company. And then he, he got captured, and he was like, realized my weapons are being used for bad shit. And then he started building the uh, the Mark One suit, and he started to become an actually hero who was actually nice. And and then and then eventually he sacrificed his own life a bunch of times. He saved, but and then like each movie he got, he kept getting better and better. And I love I love what he did. I love it at Marvel. Kudos to Marvel to evolving. And I feel like. Although I'm really, really sad, and I, I'm, I'm like, I did cry when Iron Man died in, in Endgame. I feel like they, I feel like they, they couldn't end it any better. I feel like that is an amazing end to Iron Man's character. I say perfect ending. And it sucks. Like, he, yeah, he was the obviously he was one of the original six. And if anybody notices that each in each Marvel movie, all the Original six Avengers are getting old, retiring, dying, um, are like getting up the mantle to someone younger, and that's why I think they're gonna set up the young Avengers, because like obviously Iron Man died, so he left the mantle to Spider Man. Captain America got old and gave the shield to Hawkeye, and Hawkeye, um, the Falcon, oh. and and it, I think it's cool. I'm not happy how they ended Cap. I mean. I'm happy that he gets to grow old with Peggy. I'm I'm not crazy of how he. I think they could have ended him better. Yeah, it was a terrible ending on him. He's, I don't I I don't know why. I it's weird. It's really weird. I feel like they could have 
I can't think of anything, but like I think they, they could have been. I'm like I'm happy for Cap to finally got to uh, get that final game with uh, Peggy and Sean High so I feel like it's a fine you know. And speaking of um Spider Man No Way Home, I, I can't explain. I think this might be the only Marvel movie that I'm more hyped for than when Endgame came out. I am unbelievably hyped. How about you? Are you going to see Spider-Man No Way Home when it comes out? Yeah. The day it comes out, I'm buying tickets. Oh, hell yeah. Um, It's going to be dumb expensive. I don't care. It's gonna, I'm going to get. I'm gonna go there in a heartbeat. I can't explain the amount of hype because obviously... Although Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are dying in the movie, it's obvious there's leaks, there's theories, there's everything to believe that obviously they are and they will be in the movie. They can get, they can deny it all they want, but it fits so perfectly. It's the multiverse, especially what happened in the end of Loki, especially what happened in the end of WandaVision. It, they're basically setting up. Oh yeah, by the way, we're getting more than one version of a superhero, and it's so cool because I love. I love Spider Man. Like I said, he's another top three Avenger for me. And um, I, I know Nico doesn't agree with me, but I think I still think Andrew Garfield is the better Spider Man. I love Tom Holland. I think he is. I don't know why. And uh, this, this is <laughs> I I can't even tell you of the viewers at home how many times me and Nico have gotten this argument about who was who's the best Spider Man. Tobey Maguire's Spider Man is probably the most edgiest, and I feel like I feel like the most bold Spider Man. And obviously, I'm kind of I'm part of the reason why I'm saying it is because he he kind of was the first Spider-Man in general to show up in the D MCU. Yeah. Um, Tom Holland was the best Peter Parker and the best high schooler. Plus, I will give the addition that he probably does have the best Spider-Man suit, the Iron Spider, the the original Homecoming suit, the Far From Home Spider, uh, the black and like the black and red one, like the dark one. Those are um, such amazing the jobs for the costume. But still to this day, the best Spider-Man is Andrew Garfield. But I feel like he kind of, like, I don't want to say scares you. He makes me uneasy. And that's what I feel like Spider-Man should be. He should be, he should like, kind of like, I don't want to say scare, but like, strike fear into the eyes of his enemies. And, um, yeah, I love his villains. He's has me go, but I hate his villains. The Lizard and, um, Electro were really good. Villains, and I, I just think Andrew Garfield is the better Spider-Man. Never. I don't know why. How, why do you think Tom Holland's the better Spider-Man? Because I disagree with him being big, tough, and all that. I think Spider-Man starts out as a kid, and that's what they did, and I think that's what's perfect about him. I don't know. I'm not. I don't. I, I, don't get me wrong. I have nothing against Tom Holland. So I'm not gonna watch a podcast, but. I like Tom Holland. He's a really good actor. I just don't think he's an intimidating good Spider-Man. He's a good, he's a good Peter Parker, and he's amazing with the suit. But he's not Spider-Man. That, 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 I mean, I kind of grew up with Spider-Man too. That's why I kind of also have a soft spot for Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. But I feel like he, he's just a better Spider-Man. Oh no! I can understand why. Uh, yeah. Um. And um. And then the one thing I love about Marvel movies is the music. They have the best, and, and, I, and I, when I say this, I stand by this. Marvel, I think Guardians of the Galaxy two and one are probably have the best Marvel soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, do would you think it's so it's so good? I believe it or not, and obviously I was born two thousand five. I was still wasn't born in the seventies, eighties, and nineties. But I have such a sweet spot and a soft spot for um, late seventies, eighties, and nineties music. I, so, I love it, especially like like rap back then, and like, I want to say some rock, some classic, some and like everything. Any music from the eighties and nineties, I love. And like obviously, because Peter Quill was abducted back in the nineties, he never got to experience the two thousands era of music. So the, obviously, the whole movie is based off him liking these, these music, and it's because it's because of Guardians of the Galaxy, I have a bigger and better appreciation for music out there. It's so good. Like, I'll, I'll only search up a let me search up Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I want to search the soundtrack and let's review. I'm not going to play it. 
look at that. They have Hook on a Feeling, a classic Neo Adele logo. Um, Spare on the Sky, amazing. Footage. And, and the list is going on and on. It's so good. Come and get your love. I, I love it. Such a good set. Um, bring to my next question. Besides Marvel, let's, let's move away from the Marvel topic. What? Uh, is there any good music nowadays? And that's a really good question. It's on and off. Are there, Every once are there in any a while. musicians that are, are you looking forward to making music? Um. Most, not right now, no. I'm kind of stuck to the same exact music. Every once in a while, you'll find an artist that you just start listening to. Is there, is there like a an artist of the month for you now? Is there like one who's? Is there a specific person you always find yourself listening to right now? Right now, it's definitely Sleepy Hollow. He does not miss, and his music is just so enjoyable oh. to listen to. Your name's not familiar. Uh, twenty fifty five. What's, what's the most popular song? You know the song, twenty fifty five. Oh, oh, the party in the sky one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is that is a bang. It's an extremely catchy um, song. When it comes to music, I'm I love music. I, I I'm you can ask my parents. I when I'm doing chores or walking around the house or just going outside for my like walk and jog, I listen to music. Music is so comforting. Even if, and then the thing about music is that there's so much music. To, um. Why? There's, there's a different type of music that puts you in a certain mood. Like, there's hype music that has like, a sick beat and flow that makes you like pumped up, like, ready for a game. And then there's relaxing music where you're just sitting down. Personally, I listen to lo-fi hip-hop when I'm studying. Before I go to bed, it relaxes me. It's, it's, it's a relaxing beat. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. And, um, there's different... This is different stuff, and I love music for that. I mean, what are you, what are your thoughts on c country music, Nico? <laughs> I just I don't like country music. I never have. Really? No, I feel it was ruined for me at a young age. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 definitely has its moments. Um, because my mom and dad are like rednecks. They're Italian rednecks. I never said it, it, and it's it's rare to find those breed. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. everywhere, every time I'm in the car with my mom, and she's driving, I'm in a car. It, it's always on ninety two point five or nine point two point five. That's the country station. And don't get me wrong, occasionally country songs have bangers. I'm not gonna lie, some country songs are actually slap. But and it's overplayed and over. It's the same thing happens over and over and over again. It's so annoying. Like, because, like, yeah, like, uh, there's so many bangers, but at the same time, I like country music to an extent that I'm not going to listen to it just like I do with um, hip hop and rap. You know? Because, hmm. cause, like, people may think rapping can all always be about, like, yeah, gang, guns, drugs, crips, and all that stuff like that. But some rappers who actually make their music because it's their passion and all that stuff. I feel like um he put more dedication in. You know what I mean? Who's one rapper that puts a lot of dedication in work with him? Um To be honest, not right now there's not a lot of uh, NF NF definitely puts in a lot of motivation to his music oh, and yeah. puts in a lot of effort. So much I work to it. Yep. He's a Christian rapper. I didn't know that. And I didn't see it on TikTok. You would think that he started rapping because he's really good. I love it. Yeah. When I grew up or um, the search, such good like beats. I love it. And I'm surprised because there's rarely any rappers who don't curse. And he doesn't curse, and his music is so fire. You obviously don't need to curse to have a good nope. um, music and all that stuff. But yeah, like, um, yeah. Who would you say of all time, if you had to pick one musician or a musical band, to listen to for the rest of your life, would it be? What do you think? Um, that's really difficult. It's hard. It that sucks. Is. I hate these because, because you can't honest. always be in the same mood. <laughs> it is, but you know. But if I were to say, if I were to choose, like, like if you were to go by a topic and say, like, which artist is the best at which, I feel like that's more answerable. 
because I couldn't tell you anything about country. Oh, yeah, 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 let's <laughs> let's let's switch to that. That's reasonable. What's who's the best rapper in your opinion of all times? In this um, era, from like the eighties and nineties era, I love J Cole. J Cole has been wow, around for J. such a long time, and it's not like the typical, um, the typical two kings that everybody mentions. You can go with him, Kendrick Lamar, Eminem. Those three you wow, can switch it, bro. I mean, if I had to pick, obviously I love rap, because I don't know why, but lately, before young me just listened to rap for the beat. But now, now that I'm older, I feel like I, I listen to rap to listen to the lyrics, and then that's why I asked earlier: Is any rapper should put actual thought and dedication? I think J Cole is their... one of those. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't listen listen to J Cole like a lot, a lot. But like he has what he has, um, pride is a demon. I oh, love that song. Devil, devil, bro. Um, <laughs> pride is the devil. He said demon. Uh, he has a one song a lot. He's the middle child, snow on the bluff, you know, work out, like. wet dreams. All those He's are honestly, extremely good songs. If you ask me, he's kind of an overslept. People all don't listen to him as much. He's a really under. No, rapper. people listen to him. It's just that people don't put him where he should be at. It's, like, a, it's I mean, not much respect on his name. If I had to pick, a, if I had to pick a rapper, uh, I know it's very typical, but. I wasn't gonna say Eminem, but I'm blanking on the name because I feel like Eminem had to be inspired by somebody. And if you can inspire Eminem, because Eminem are hands down one of the most influential rappers of all time, he inspired a majority of the rappers today. But do you think there's somebody who inspired Eminem? And I'm blanking out the name because I think there is somebody mm, who Dr. inspired Dre. Eminem to the rap. Dr. Dre, yeah, Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre I don't listen to Dr. Dre. No. But I, I kind of had to give credit to what credit's due. He raised them pretty much. <laughs> and then that's that's what um. Also, I I, I kind of want to say that I want to say Dr. Dre for the pure fact that he's like the the Godfather, the father of rap. But I don't listen to Dr. Dre. No. I listen to a lot of Eminem. Um, I want to say Tupac and Tupac, Tupac and Biggie, but I don't. I listen to like a couple of their songs. I don't. I'm not like an Heavy, two pack. Fuck, he's two pack. I feel really offended now. I, I, I'm sorry, I offended you guys. Tupac and uh, Biggie. Yeah, Biggie Small. Those are the typical but, ones. Um, That's why I never choose them. Yeah, I gotta say Eminem because honestly, Eminem is oh, a yeah. all really good example of why he I listen to rap. And the thing is, like, sure, how his language has profanity, like oh fuck shit, and all, all that stuff, and all that other stuff. But um. Uh, but at the same time, he is a he's a prime good example of him having hidden secrets and lure and a reason to why he makes his song. Like his songs are really sad. Like he he can have a whole album of song of songs that are just like pure fire, and then they have that one song that just makes you dumb sad. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, what uh, was that? Mockingbird. Yeah. That song. Um, yeah, River, song. I think it's River by Eminem and Ed Sheeran. That song is really sad, but I I've never listened to that. Thing. I refuse to it's listen about, to Ed Sheeran. Um, it's about no, he he has like a couple lines. It's mostly Eminem. It's about um Eminem and his love triangle, and then Eminem realizes that his girl is, has a husband, and she gets pre. It, it's uh, I I recommend you listen. It's a really good music video and song. We'll and see. it's it's. it's so good, I love it. Like, and but the one thing I love about music is seasonal music. If you can ask Christmas Nico, music, bro. <laughs> exactly, you took the words right out of my mouth. The Christmas words, music is the best I, of all time. I listen to Christmas music in the middle of the summer. I don't care yeah. if it's Halloween. I don't care if it's Thanksgiving. I don't even care if it's Easter. I will listen to Christmas music. <laughs> There's Any nothing wrong with matter that. Matter of the day, year. And and it's just so good. It's so I, I I love it. It's so relaxing. Like even if it's just I like recently I've been listening to when I gaming or talking to y'all. I listen to Christmas jazz. And usually I think jazz is overrated. But like dude, 
it, when it comes to Christmas jazz and the crinkle of the fireplace and the music is so relaxed, it puts me at ease. That's why I like when I if I'm ever angry, I just listen to Christmas music and it puts my mind at ease. Because especially just the month of December, it's and I tell us to Nico and Nico, you can you claim me on this. I like the month of December rather than Christmas itself. It's a weird thing. Like, it, 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 everyone, one, everyone's in a good mood because Christmas, because of music. Not only music, but everyone's, ooh, ooh, sorry, excuse me. Everyone's seeing each other for the holidays. Everyone's seeing each other for, like, gifts exchanging and all that. And it's, everyone's in a good mood. The music is amazing. The food, Christmas ham. Oh, it's such a good vibe. I love, I love Christmas. I love December. Is in, you know, honestly, like, well, what, what are you, what are you asking for this Christmas this year, Nico? What do you think? No, like, no. What's the one, what's the one highlight? I'm a little old for it, but if I can get some, like, definitely that PS5 will always come in clutch. That's what I want. My main goal. Oh, bro. That's the Still wrong answer, bro. You got tricked. You should have said a gaming PC. Like, we'll buy one of those soon. But you definitely the PS5. Old? Yeah. Damn, bro. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, I do have an Xbox and a PC, so you're kind of right. I like to play my sports games, and I want to play next gen on both of them. That is true. Plus, if you're going to play the new Spider Man game. Yep. Oh, God of War and other. That's 2023. It's worth the wait. I, when I talk about impatience, uh, <laughs> it, it, you know. It makes sense why it's gonna take that long, cause obviously the first game is so amazing graphics and the next generation gen tra- um tracing and all that. It's obviously not gonna take a month. Stuff like that, especially that game is like a lot of space, cause it's it's a whole ass city. You can literally explore the whole entire New York as Spider Man. So it's it's no wonder that it's gonna take that long. But anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. But yeah, so PS Five. I mean. For me, now that I'm starting to get into the podcasting and streaming business, I want a lot of stuff for my setup. I want um, so one much that a lot of streamers and YouTubers use, which is um, yeah, it's the Sure uh, SM7B. It's one of the most high quality, um, smooth looking mic. The mic looks so satisfying, and um. Yeah, that 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 is a mic that I definitely want to get. Like, I love my mic now. My mic is fine and chill, but like that's like a real step up to like what I want. Um, but yeah, I'm mean, obviously I asking for a brand new a whole ass computer will be a, a huge step up. You know what I mean? Extremely. If you want a high quality streaming computer and a gaming computer, that that's almost uh, that probably costs two PS fives. I'm gonna get that oh, Zydex yes. computer. That's what I want. The thing, the thing with most streamers, they they have two computers when they stream. They have a, a whole ass separate computer for streaming, and other for gaming. Because if you're gonna have a lot of tabs open when you're streaming, like Streamlabs or um, OBS Studio, that takes a lot of space and storage. So I mean, it makes sense why I have two computers. But like I feel like two computers is is kind of like pushing the limit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know why, but I feel like it, it is. Maybe if yeah, you're bigger and you have the money, do it, but... Obviously, yeah. Because, like, if you're, like, someone like me who's just trying to get back into streaming and stuff like that, don't blow your money out on, on a computer. On a new computer. Because, like, if you say to your parents, don't worry, I'm going to get the money back on Twitch. When I stream, I'm going to get all paid and I'll pay it back. And the highly chance that you're not going to blow up on Twitch because, you know, for some reason... You're not gonna get the money back. You just blew like what, 300, 500, probably more on a brand new gaming PC with specs and hard drives, a mother box, cooling fans, and all that stuff. That's you like know, over you're not gonna get your money something. back. Yeah. It's yeah, it's unbelievable. That's why I say it probably costs like three PS5s, probably more, if you get a really good high quality. But I don't know, I'm get, I'm getting this side this um distracted from my main question. So Christmas time. Obviously, in December. Obviously, in winter. 
my question for you guys, the viewers, and Nico, is that summer or winter? That simple. What, what are you, Nico? What are you? Um, that's, uh... It has pros and cons. There, there is. It In summer, pros. it's hot. You could play, like, sports and all that. Winter, that's the perfect time where you can actually, like, wear sweatshirts. Which I love wearing sweatshirts. I don't know about you. I'm fat. I don't need to wear sweatshirts. <laughs> it's the rare occasion where I need to wear sweatshirts. I might. Yeah, my snow fat is always is fun. To... Yeah. Not gonna lie, bro. I wish I was fat so I didn't have to do all that. But. Well, Nick, what if I told you it was simple? Just eat a lot of food. <laughs> I had three burritos t yesterday. I do eat food. You probably, you probably, you probably gained one pound. To be honest. I probably lost the weight. Knowing you, you can eat a whole Thanksgiving meal <laughs> and gain like two pounds. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And I'll eat it and I'll have like fifty pounds just gained on to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm like me personally, um, it comes as a shocker, I'm a pretty big guy. So I sweat a lot. And summer being summer, you know, doesn't help it at all. Um, but like Nico said, sports is a really big factor. A lot of good sports like um like baseball and um, other stuff happen in, in the in the summer. Not only that, but like the pool. I love pool. Oh, I love pool. I know how to English really good. Um, pool is pool is just so fun to cool down. The beach is. I don't know why, but I like the beach is slowly starting to decline on me. I don't know why. I, I mean, don't wrong, when I go to the beach, I'm hype. Yeah, like when I go to the beach, I'm hype and all. But like, I I don't know why. As of now, as of lately, it's not as hype. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, when I go to the beach, I go in the water a lot. But for the majority of the time, I want to sit down on the in like my beach chair and just like relax, listen, take a nap, listen to waves. Cause I don't know about you, but I love the sound of waves. It's relaxing. It's it's so good. But um. Um, yeah, but like the winter, though. No, I never get cold. I rarely get cold. The winter is no different. I will literally, you can ask Nico, but especially in elementary school, I would wear shorts to school if it's winter time. Yeah. Everyone would be like, how the hell? Everyone's wearing jeans and sweatpants, and I'm over here with, with just plain fucking simple shorts. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's a. It gets to the point where, like, scientists are like, what the hell? How does this kid? <laughs> but, um, yeah, but, but sledding. I haven't sled in a while because I'm, I'm old and mature, but, like, I'll, I'll, I'll occasionally, I'll occasionally. Go sledding. Exactly. It's so, it's so simple. You go on a big-ass hill really fast with, like, a tube or a sled, and you just go just zoom in. Yeah. Um, Christmas time, hot chocolate. The, the, but the cons of winter is that frostbite, a um, lot of shoveling and plowing, black ice, you slip on it. And driving. Icicles. Uh, yeah, driving. It's, it's, uh, that's why it's really hard. Wait, that's why I need you guys' help. So make sure you guys comment on, uh, if you guys are listening on YouTube, comment in the section, on Spotify, you know, on SoundCloud, listening to the comment section. Winter or summer? I'm, 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 I'm going to have to go with winter. Not that many. Well, besides Fourth of July, which I love Fourth of July. But I think if you can mix them both, fall, that is the best time of the year. Oh my god! <laughs> fall really where it's randomly hot and randomly cold, that is perfect. No, but I feel like spring. Is, no, spring is both. Spring I really, is spring more rainy than anything. Cold. Actually, not. Like, well, it's Pennsylvania. It's raining every day. <laughs> yeah, it rains and then it snows but, and. January. But like the thing is I learned this year the hard way that spring is so beautiful. It's not cold. It's not like <laughs> it's not cold. It's not hot. It's the right com combination and I can stand outside for hours. Because That's how I feel about fall. It's so beautiful. It's so relaxing and, and pretty. Um, but obviously with most people um, spring is my allergy season so I I wish I could stay for hours, but I can't because I have stuffy noses. I sneeze. I, 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 one time this, 
one time this this year, I I think I sneezed like ten times in like three minutes, not even. It, it it's so bad, but I love spring. Although I can't go out. But yeah, I'm gonna have to go with winter here because like I say, the whole month of December, I I just carries the winter. Because it's just such a good time of the month. Yeah. It's such a good time of the month. And what, what's even a better time of the month is that obviously now that it's Christmas and it's December, um, we, all classes are off. And obviously for like me, um, if you haven't had a long break in a while in school, Christmas break is like the holy grail of like, hell yeah, I'm getting all my work done in one day and the rest of the rest of the week I'm just sleeping all night, or gaming all night and gaming all day. And um, but honestly, like class, I feel like school can be underrated sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes some classes, some class, especially in person. As of recently, there hasn't been that many, but I've um. Have you had a, a really funny in school experience? Any class funny mm. class moments, Nico? Um, yeah, I have. <laughs> I had a well, what um, is it? Explain. one of one of my um I guess you could say one of my old close friends decided to bag one of the teachers and put him in a trash entire trash <laughs> oh, bag on please. the last day of school. <laughs> Was this in elementary school? No, this is in a I think it was eighth grade. And we bagged our math teacher. It, that I'm was assuming, extremely you know, entertaining. I'm assuming he wasn't happy though, was he? Um, I think a little bit of both. He started off happy about it, and then he got <laughs> mad at it because he didn't stop bagging him. It was like eight bags on him. Okay, yeah, no, that that. What's yeah. funny? What's and then funny, um, man? I forget what the song's called. Um. I think it's, it's you know the one song by Big Sean. That um. Which one? I forget how it goes. Uh, I don't remember yeah. the name of it. If but if you listen to it, they wrapped that entire song in seventh grade to one of my teachers, and one of the kids got suspended on the last day of school. <laughs> that that's was right. so that's entertaining. When I, that's when I say that. Class can be so underrated sometimes because <coughs> obviously your parents think, "Yeah, you're going to class to learn." But the the rare occasion that, yeah, uh, this happened today, it, it's just so funny because like a really funny example I can think of right off the back is when I'm sixth grade. I think it was towards the end of the year because my teacher, um, was slowly starting to get like nicer because he just wanted to finish the year. He just wanted to, he just wanted to go home. Um, and I remember, I don't know about you, Nick, I don't know what Nico probably knows, but the, the desk at our old elementary school, you could put stuff inside, like your books, folders, and things. Yep. Remember that? Remember those desks? Mm -hmm. I miss those desks, first of all. But second of all, I would keep my phone in there. So, um, I remember I was towards the middle end of the class, and I was going through my phone because I heard the notification. And at perfect timing, I, mean, I, I couldn't time this any better, but the te my teacher was like, whose phone is that? He got up, and I, I, I chilled, and I quickly like slid my phone back into my desk, and he started getting up and expecting, uh, expecting and all that, and then I think a kid right behind me, I, I hate, I don't like him this day. He was always, he was always a dick to me. Um, he, he said, and he, he pointed that he had his phone, and he took the phone, and he was like, what? Did he, he actually seemed mad. He yelled at him like, what did I say? About taking your phone in the middle of class. You know that's not a rule. And, and when he did, he said, um, all the classrooms at the old elementary school, remember how some all the classes had uh, water fountains in the back so obviously the, the kids can get a drink in the middle of class and all that? Yep. He, what he <laughs> did is that he slammed the phone right into the water fountain and just mm. started spraying it with water. Yeah, and no. And I thought because... I thought for sure, because he was right behind me. I thought for sure he was going to hear my phone and he was going to go after me and my phone. And then everyone was like laughing and like at the same time they were shot. Like, Holy shit, what the hell did he just do? And um, and he was like, he was like, got you. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? The kid, 
my the camera was on it. It was a fake phone. And it, it was it was the probably one of the funniest things that it actually got to me and scared me that I actually thought that it was actually my phone. But yeah, that's what to say. Some classes can be really underrated and that's why I miss in person school. Like Sure, online school is better for me academically, but I need social interaction. Even if it's with kids I don't talk to, I make friends with them. I just talk to them. I talk to the teachers. Some of the teachers are, are really underrated. You know? You know? Yeah, I would. One thing that school has definitely, definitely um, known for is cafeteria. What do you think had the best food? What was the best food you've ever had in have, uh, school lunch? It could be from elementary school and, um, Abington, like, you know. They were tater tots, and they also had these, like, strawberry jelly with whipped cream on the top. Which, which one? Are you talking about elementary school, Copper Beach, or Abington? I think it was definitely, no, it was junior high. Abington definitely has it a lot better. Yeah, Their hash I, browns are so good. Some of the food can be underrated. When you think of, like, because I feel like some places, some schools in general get a bad representation like, how nasty and shit that some school cafeterias are. And don't get me wrong, for the most part, some of the school lunch are just plain disgusting and nasty. But the thing with my old elementary school, Harper Beach, is that every Friday, Big Daddy Cheese Pizza. And you may be thinking, why the hell are you giving me that name? I might make up the name. That was actually the name of the pizza, Big Daddy Cheese Pizza. I'm not sure if it was frozen pizza or they got it from a place. Do you, do you know, Nico? Um, not gonna lie, I wish I knew. Now, and now that you bring it up, I, I wish I, I knew. I don't know. Cause like, oh my god, it, most people complain about it. It was too cheesy. I personally, I like, I like um, more cheese on my pizza. I like cheese. Too much sauce is not good. Like obviously, a pe good pizzas have sauce. But personally, bro, it's all about the cheese. I love cheese. A lot of cheese on my pizza. Uh, you know I, mean? I do light cheese. It's like light cheese, really? What type of cheese do you get in your pizza? Oh, holy crap! Oh my god! No, no, no. Nico is telling out a, a lactose intolerant, but he doesn't like cheese. Which is the weirdest thing, cause cheese is so good. I don't know what you mean, bro. It's terrible. I'm sorry. Cheese is so bad. But. The Cheese on those big daddy cheese pizzas was so phenomenal, so good. And the pop, I literally was talking about a couple together on the Discord. The popcorn chicken, it would come in this like a little popcorn bowl, and those little chicken bites, oh my god, so good. But I feel like, although those were elementary school food, and I have a soft spot for for those because they're only so nostalgic for me. But I feel like the one thing that's gonna carry me, honestly. Is Abington Junior High School Bill Jones sandwich, and at my school, there's different parts of the cafeteria. There's the there's usually pizza, which the Abington pizza is nothing compared to the Big Daddy Cheese pizza that back in elementary school. There's the meal of the day, which it changes obviously every day. There's the hot section where there's like cheeseburgers and chicken sandwiches, potato wedges, fries, tater tots, and then there's the Bill Jones sandwiches, and it's it, it's basically a little mini subway. So what I would do, I remember the first day of school, of seventh grade, and I was like, "What the hell am I gonna get?" Because I didn't pack. Because I I told my parents I didn't want to pack lunch because I want to experience what the options they have. And the one thing that really pinned my eye was Nico sandwich. Because before that, I really didn't like cold sandwiches. I would when I usually when I pack lunch, I'll pick um, I'll pick a grilled cheese. But when I say, bro, and, I, and this might sound sad, but every single, from 7th grade to the end of ninth grade before we got cut off because of COVID, when I didn't pack lunch, I would get the salami, cheese, and onion sandwich. Yeah, and you I remember. Sneak, oh, bro, that shit was so delicious. I don't know how you did it every single day. I, it's, don't get me wrong. Obviously, onions do not are not good for your breath. <laughs> so I would usually bring, like, breath mints or breath strip after and I'll pop it in my mouth because <laughs> onions are, are not the best breath mints. <laughs> so, but like, um, so yeah, it was just so good. I had it every, like I said, I had it every day. Every day that I didn't pack, I would eat, get it. 
It's the point where the lunch lady literally made it before I en entered my entered my lunch period. She'll have it right there. Bam, you're good to go. And it was so good. It was so good. I love it. Which brings me to my my one of my last and final questions for today is that if you what what's your favorite food? Actually, instead of doing one food, let's do let's do top three favorite food. How about that? You think three or five would be good, Nico? Wait, I'm sorry, you're my cut out. What'd you say? I said you want to um. My last question is um, what's your favorite food? But instead of doing what's your one favorite food, you want to do like what's your top three favorite food or top five favorite food? I think top five. Top five sounds better. Either way. I think what steak is definitely up there. Ah, uh, go go ahead. It could be appetizers, snacks. What's up? I think I think everything. We do everything. Everything at top five. Ah, uh, go. You go first. I think steaks steaks are definitely number one. I put Oreos oh. probably at number two. Solid. Um, fried rice. Fried rice definitely. Oh. Um, the perfect burger. Mm -hmm. Um, on a blank on the next one. I really am. So that's so you said steak, rice, steak, fried rice, burger, burger Oreos, Oreos. Not one um, more, one more. I'm not gonna lie, much of pulley bowls they be hitting different. Bro, I can't, bro, this is a whole ass other conversation around the podcast. What the fuck is with your bowls? Yeah, everyone knows <laughs> that burritos are better. They're not. They really are. They aren't. really are. The, the DHL is not only good, but it, it cramps everything together, and it's just so perfect. Yeah, that's they, it's it's a it's extremely smaller portions. If you're actually hungry, you uh, would get a bowl. Maybe it's your Chipotle, but the Chipotle near me, they pack me up. I like my my bur my burrito is a brick when I get pulled up. <laughs> then they, I don't know what type uh, of burritos this? you can get, this? bro. I, I, dude, I told you I get steak, chicken, rice, cheese. You probably got so a double wrapped. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes what I do is I get the chips and I crunch up the the, the chia chips and I make it crunchy. I highly recommend people do that at home. Oh how about this? How about this? People, people in the comment section, what do you think is better? Burrito bowls or burrito just burritos? Did I say burrito bowls? So fucking dumb. Burritos <laughs> or bowls? Comment down in the section down below. Personally, like I said, I'm team burritos. Bowls bowls are basically just burritos at the shell. Which honestly, I'm not I'm not gonna hate on like like I'm not gonna hate on bowls. Like I literally just said it's literally a burrito without a chia shell. But personally I think that the chia shell just sells it for me. I think it's way better. Yeah, so so let's see. For you, it was your steak, rice, Oreos, burger, and your burrito bowl. All right. I feel like we're gonna be here for a very long time. Listen, bro. If you actually wanted a um, good thing, just get the tortilla inside of the bowl, and you'll still get the tortilla. No, it's the point of that. You're basically it's basically a burrito. If you're gonna ask for a side of tortilla shells. No, which no, just put the tortilla ready. The tortilla that they use to make the burrito, place on the entire outline of the bowl, and you could just like eat it like that. That is, that is so weird. A lot of people that do is, it. So, but is so is a a a bowl cheaper than a burrito? No, the burrito's cheaper because of the portions. You get like double as much as you do in a bowl than you would in a burrito. <laughs> I was gonna say, so mine's probably a little more expensive, but so yours is like more expensive than a normal bowl. Hey, bro, you get double. You go big or you go home. Chipotle. Honestly, out of <laughs> all the companies I said in this podcast, I really want Chipotle to sponsor me the most. I I, I love Chipotle with a passion. Nico works at Chipotle, so I feel like I think he should be sponsored. But honestly, Chipotle, sponsor me up. Hit me in the DM, please. I love Chipotle <laughs> with a passion. Anyways, um, my top five food, my top five, I can go for literally hours. We give me until like five in the morning. So we want, <laughs> but uh, steak is definitely up there. Like Nico, steak is. I don't want to do this in order, but if we are doing it, steak is number one. I I can inhale steak. The biggest steak I've eaten, um, I want to say was a 20 ounce steak. It was 24 I ounces. I remembered. Yeah. You went to a I restaurant. In like 10 minutes. 
Yeah, that that's not healthy. It's not healthy. Don't get me wrong. I don't advise people to speed run eating it. Just enjoy the steak in generally. But like, dude, dude, the steak is so good. I love steak. My favorite type of steak is pie ribeye because it's the biggest. But chip steak is good for cheese steak. I love me good old flank steak, sirloin, York, York. Um, I just love all types of steaks, honestly. Um. Wait, my list is gonna be very, very similar to me. I, I gotta put chicken wings. I love. Plus, these, these past two years, I've been a, like unhealthily addicted to chicken wings. It is unnecessarily good, especially buffalo. Okay. When it, well, buffalo chicken wings. This is placed near me. It's called Apollo's Pizza, and Nico Ew. doesn't agree with me, but they have Ew. the best wings in my town. They have Ever. the best wings. I literally had it last night for dinner. I got, which by the way, another good question for you guys and the viewers: Are you guys team drums or are you guys team flats? I I love I get all drums. Drums have more meat on the bone, and it's it's less complicated. Like, what if you accidentally bite one of the two bones? It's so stupid. That's why I like, drum is just one long big bone, and then it's surrounded by all the chicken meat. And it is, that's what a regular wing should be. That's why when I get my Apollo's pizza, I get 10 drumstick buffalo wings. It's so good. So good. So, um, steak wings. Um, I'm gonna have to put a cheesesteak. Probably because I'm not from Pennsylvania. To that's totally not the reason. Wink, wink. That's how I love cheesesteaks. <laughs> Me too, further. It is. I don't, I don't want to put it because I literally just said steak. No, no, no. I'm gonna take it off. I do love cheesesteaks, by the way. But I said steak. Um, I'm gonna say burger. That's also you know what? Fuck it. I'm putting cheesesteak and burger. Why not? So cheesesteak burger. I love it. Hey. Good old the burger has to be juicy and smoky. It can't be dry. If you make a burger dry, then you should not be a chef. It, how the hell do you <laughs> make a burger dry? It depends. It, to be honest, like, it depends if it's thick or not. If it's thin, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, cheese steak, burger. Honestly, you know, I'm gonna do something that you didn't do, bro. I'm gonna put. Oh, what I'm gonna pick a dessert. I love yeah, I don't like dessert. desserts like um, that. Honestly, I'm gonna do a very underrated dessert. I'm gonna go with cinnabons. I love cinnabons. I love the frosting, the, the cinnamon. Oh, cinnabons are so good. What? Some desserts aren't good. What did you say, Nico? Those Cinnabons are so good. Nah. How do you not like Cinnabons? They're not as good. No, I'm saying like... That, that's so stupid. I, I, no, like they're they're good. It's just that I'd rather have a meal than a dessert. Desserts aren't... Uh, I just... I like I don't like cake and all that. Those are that disgusting. Is, what do you go for dessert then? Here. Man, I nice pie. Pie? Yeah, pie's good. I'm not, I'm not too, I used to be crazy about this apple humble pie at this local deli that I go to. But I, I'm not big on pie. I don't know why. Actually, uh, I really want to change my dessert answer because honestly, if I had to pick a close second, it would be cookie cake. I love cookie cake. Eh. It's, so, it's so simple, but it's the most genius thing ever. It's good. Honestly, uh, I don't know. It's a tie between cookie cake and cinnamon. It really is. They're both good, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's a really good call. It's a really good call. But other than that, I think I'm done. I think I've asked all the questions. That was a really good episode. I feel like this is... Yeah. But we started recording around here on 8.30, and it's 9.40. Yeah. Holy shit, this is a long episode. Yes, it is. Man, we were... We went from a 16 episode to like an hour long episode. This is good. Um, but hey guys, that is gonna end up the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, tell me guys in the comments if you like these longer episodes. If you guys, um, if you guys rather have like a 38, 40 minute podcast or long interviews like this, tell me guys in the comments down below. Um, like I said before in the beginning of the podcast, we have all the social medias. Um, it's the Brilla Show podcast. 
on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Um, make sure to follow us on the YouTube. It is the Blush Show Podcast and on Spot, I think Spotify. Which, by the way, we are working. I am working to get the podcast on Spotify. It's a little complicated than for some reason, but we have the podcast on SoundCloud. It's the Barilla Show. Um, so yeah, so make sure you guys like. If you guys liked it, make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and right next to the subscribe button, there's a ring. Make sure you click the ring, the bell, because every time I make a video, you guys will get notified that I made a new episode of the podcast. Um, yeah, Nico, is there any platforms? Do you want to shout out your platforms? I'll let you. Just shout your own social media. Where, where can they follow you? Uh, you can follow me at Twitch at Nico Do Not Worry. And if I remembered my YouTube, I would shout that out too, but I don't. All right. You guys know that. You can go to Twitch. Um, I'm Nico. working on my news. I'm probably going to start streaming a lot more often. I'm really hoping to start streaming. And if you guys like Ruben Stream, tell me down in the comments down below. So, yeah, guys, follow me on the social medias. Leave a like, and as always, I'll see you guys next Friday. Peace and love.